All right, welcome back to the Speedy Space Marine series. Today we're going to be looking at the Emperor's Children, a legion that strove for perfection throughout the Horus Heresy. So I'm going to show you the perfect way to get these guys on the tabletop in 30 minutes or less. All the paints you'll need will be listed below in the description, so let's get into it. All right, starting off with Nagroth Knight, we're going to be applying this all over the model. Not really too worried about the application or the style of the application, we're just getting paint on the model. I'm using a medium artist opus dry brush here just to get all of the paint on the model as fast as possible. I am sort of dry brushing, sort of stippling, sort of just slapping it on, building up a bit of texture as I go. But Nagroth Knight, lovely color. I actually think it might be one of Games Workshop's nicest purples. Now I've got, is it Xerus purple? I'm hoping I'm saying that one right. Probably getting it wrong. Xerus purple, maybe? Mixing that with a bit of the Nagroth Knight and starting to build up some of our highlights. We're following those natural light lines that you see in the model whenever you hold it under your hobby lamp. So it's top of the shoulders, top of the backpack, uh, the back of the legs, uh, down the front of the legs and over the arms. Again, we're trying to focus our light towards the most impactful areas of the model, which is always going to be the shoulders and the head. So just dry brush this on again sort of stipple parts of it again looking to continue to build up some of that texture we're now going to take emperor's children and mix that in to our xerius purple and nagroth knight mix we're starting to dry brush this on using light pressure to start picking out the details and define some of those brighter points of the model so you can see i'm using sort of circular motions on the shoulder pads to create a bit of a specular highlight bit more difficult with the the bobbled side or the studded side but you can you can make it work and again we're just picking out those details trying to catch those edges using light pressure and making sure we've worked off a majority of our paint on the dry palette again going back to the dampener anytime that we're starting to build up any chalky texture that we don't want so you can see i'm continuing to follow those light lines picking out those sections that the light would hit on the backs of the legs, front of the, front of the legs, um, the shoulder pads, and obviously on the head and the hands that are holding the gun as well. So I'm just continuing to mix more and more of the Emperor's Children into that mix and continue to build up those highlights and those points of interest within the model. Uh, we're not worried too much about everything being perfectly smooth while we're doing this or the transitions being perfect while we're dry brushing this or building up our points of interest because we'll be applying a filter layer over the top of this to create some harmony between the colors and soften any of our transitions. So now we're coming in with pretty much pure Emperor's Children. I haven't cleaned my brush at any point throughout this process. So there's still gonna be some of those previous colors in there. So it's not 100% pure Emperor's Children, but you get the idea. Now we're really focusing on those bright points of the model, really drawing out those volumetric shapes and adding in those volumetric highlights. Uh, this will help just to boost some interest in those areas and give you more contrast over the model. Now I'm taking a small or an extra small Artist Opus dry brush here and I'm using this to establish some chips using pure Emperor's Children, catching all of those areas that would naturally get chipped throughout the battle. So it's bottom of the greaves, edges of the armor, um, up onto the shoulder pads, the arms, always looking towards the edges of the model rather than the flat bellies of the plates until it comes to the shoulder pads where you can be a wee bit more aggressive with your chipping. Obviously try to keep this minimal, focus on the areas that you've already highlighted because it continues to build that contrast and make the armor appear more interesting. Once you're done with the weathering, your Emperor's Children should look something similar to this. So now I've taken some Nagroth Knight and thinned this quite heavily to a filter or glaze consistency. You could use any other purple wash or even a contrast over the top of this, but I like to make my own because I find it's more versatile and definitely something I recommend that you practice. But I'm just applying this all over the model, ensuring that it doesn't pull anywhere and if it does, I wick it away with a damp brush. We're using this just to tint the colors and apply an even filter over all of the purple armor. This just helps to create some harmony and unify all of those colors. 
You should have something that looks like this. I think this is a super effective and super nice purple armor. And now we're on to the metallics. I'll be using Exhaust Manifold from Vallejo Metal Color and Retributor Armor from Citadel Colors. So take your Exhaust Manifold or any other silver uh, that you want to use and apply that over all of the sections that will be silver. So the buckles across the chest, the backpack and the gun. Um, I definitely recommend the Metal Color set. I think the Exhaust Manifold is great. I only ever really need one coat of this. If you're using a different metallic, you may have to coat it once or twice. Just take your time, try not to get any of this over any of the previous purple that we painted. I should probably mention I'm using an Artisopus size 2 here to paint all of the metallics. Again, I recommend that you do this with the larger brush just because it's quicker. So when you're painting the gun, you don't need to be super careful. Just uh, make sure you cover all of those silver parts and avoid hitting the hands. We'll be coming back in and cleaning up the casing later. Taking some Retributor armor, we apply this over any of the sections that we want to be gold. I thought a gold belt would be very Emperor's Children, quite bling, and then the studs on the shoulder pad. Whenever I'm doing this, I try to just catch the bottom edge, the top edge, and then just fill in anything that I've missed find it's the easiest way to avoid hitting any of the purple underneath. Alright, now it's time for some cleanup. So we're going to take some Mars Black and apply that all over the rubberized sections or the tubing between the armor panels and over the gun casing. This may take one or two coats, uh, it just depends on the coverage of your black paints. Um, so if you have contrast paints, it'll work, um, or anything else uh, would, be, would be suitable. Just again, take your time, try not to get any of it over the purple armor, and fill in all of those sections. And whenever it comes to painting the gun casing, try to avoid any of the metallics that you did earlier and just aim for nice even coverage over that. So I've thinned down my Mars Black here to a wash consistency. You could use Nuln Oil, again a contrast or any other black ink that you have. We're just applying that all over the metallic sections or I should say all over any of the silver metallic sections. Um, just to darken those down and create a bit more grim dark kind of grit look to them. Whenever you're doing this over the gun, you can apply it all over uh, the gun and the casing because uh, they're all black. We're going to take some of the goat, the burnt sienna umber here and apply this over our, so our gold metallics. So aim to get a nice even coat over these, just tint the colour and add a bit more warmth to it. If you apply too much, just take a damp brush and wick away any of the excess. This will help to create some separation between the shoulder pad and those gold studs and just make it a bit more interesting. Now I'm just coming in with some Retributor armor and adding a slight highlight to those gold studs again just to make them really pop and glint against this armor. And we're doing the same with the exhaust manifold, just adding in some highlights and some points of interest within the metallics. And it's the same with the gun, just add in some stippling or some choppy texture to this just to give that battle-worn damaged look. So taking our burnt sienna umber, I've thinned this down again into a wash consistency. You could use, you know, Agrax or shade or another similar tone and just apply this all over the rubberized sections of the armor. This just gives the impression that there's been dirt, oil, grime building up throughout the battle. We're going to apply this over the silver metallics as well just to give a bit of that dirt, grime, battle worn look. So this may take a couple of passes to build up the intensity but just use your best judgement until you're happy with it. Now we're going to take some Dark Angels Green. This paint is no longer in production. Any of the old timers like myself will recognise that paint pot. It's about 20 years old. 
um, but we're applying this all over the eyes to set the foundation. I thought green eyes would look quite nice with the purple armour, and we're taking some primary yellow, mixing that in with the Dark Angel's green, and highlighting up those lenses. I'm looking to hit the lower edge and towards the inner corner. Adding in a bit more primary yellow to the mix, try and cover a slightly smaller area than you did before, again focusing on that inner corner and lower edge of the lens. And finally, with some primary yellow, I'm just hitting the inner corner of the lens. Now we're going to take some titanium white and use this to dot the rear corner of the eye lens. Just brace, be confident whenever you're applying the dot, and aim to just do it in one stroke. You may have to apply a wee bit extra, you can see I was just testing it on my thumb before I go to add in the dot. I'm going to show you how I put together the base for this. I took some Vallejo uh, thick mud and just applied that all over the base. You can do this with a brush as well, but um, I just used this uh, hobby tool that I have that just makes life that wee bit easier. It saves me ruining as many brushes as well. If you are doing this with brush, I do recommend that you do it with an old battered brush as well. Don't use any new brushes or any um, sable brushes when doing this. Just work it out to the edge and then let that dry. Once it's dry, we're gonna come in with the Martian uh, Iron Earth and we're gonna apply a few dollops of this over the base. That'll help give our mud this like crackled dry effect on the top. Don't worry that it's a different color. We are gonna be coming in and painting this. So once it's all dry, you get these sort of crackled effects on the top and it just gives the mud a bit of a different impression and adds a wee bit more information to the base. So prime that black and then come in again with our large dry brush and start building up some um, Mornfang brown over the base. Just apply this in uh, a, a normal dry brushing fashion. Um, actually, I'm probably applying this in more of a layer getting the color down quickly. Um, mix a bit of XV88 in with your previous color and just start to dry brush over. Use circular motions and keep the pressure light so you're starting to pick out the detail within the base. Then using some towel iron sand, mix that in with your XV88 and begin picking out a few more of the details. Again, light pressure, circular motions, and just pick out those, uh, those edges of the base. And then some pure towel iron sand just to hit the last few highlights. This is just to give us some color variety throughout the base before we come in with a wash over the top of this. So to get a bit more saturation and color into the base, we're going to be using some um, burnt sienna umber and just applying this in a thick wash over the base. If you have like Agrax Earthshade or another similar color, you can just use that. And be quite liberal whenever you're doing this as well, because you want this to help add some tone to the recesses. And then come back in with your previous uh, dry brush mixes with the XV88 and the Bestial Brown or Mornfang Brown, I think, sorry, as it is now, um, and start building up those tones again. Adding some Talar and Sand into the mix just really hit those edges and give the impression that the mud is dried on the top. With the remaining paint that's on your brush, just apply this over the base of the feet or the bottom of the feet and the bottom of the greaves, just to give that impression that the marine has been walking through the dirt and is incorporated into the base. And here is the finished product on the base and ready to hit the tabletop. I think the 30K Emperor's Children just look amazing. I love the super saturated purples with the gold accents, just looks so regal and so impressive. Games Workshop have a number of great paints for building these super saturated purples. 
that look vibrant and impressive on the tabletop. If you have an Emperor's Children transfer, pop that on the shoulder. I just didn't have any to hand and these boys will look fantastic. Hopefully you found that useful. If you have any comments, questions or suggestions for future videos, please drop them below in the comments. And if you want to take your painting to the next level, I have a Patreon that's focused around feedback and coaching. You'll also get access to exclusive content and guides. I stream on Twitch if you want to come by and hang out, and we have a Discord where you can share your work and get involved with the community. All of the links can be found below in the description, but before you go, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you at the next one. Thank you for watching.